thank you the, for those excessively kind words. Um, it's a real pleasure to be with you again. I'll try not to disappoint. Um, I, you know, we're meeting in 2024, and it's a very different world than just 2020 or 2014. And it's certainly a different world than 1914 or 1814. So <clears throat> I think we have to kind of move beyond some outdated methods um, and dystopian fears and really try to, to dwell in the possibilities that we have with AI now. We're, I feel like we're very blessed uh, to be able to combine our ancient uh, interest with some modern tools. Um, I always feel uncomfortable in, in the beginning of a semester. And this semester, I feel uh, even more uncomfortable. Why? I have plenty of experience. Um, but the technological environment we're working in has changed so much and will continue to change all year. So right now, I like using the AI tools perplexity. I appreciate um, the Microsoft tool Copilot, um, but um, I'm aware that like literature, uh, which helps us kind of make sense of our sometimes bewildering world, the, the tech tools that we have are changing all the time. And sometimes if we have large classes and we have heavy workloads, we don't necessarily experience this as a pleasure, but often as pressure. And um, I think that's, that's a real difficulty. Um, but I think we can keep our balance and we can keep our balance by remembering why we teach and why we love literature and the power of words um, that endure. Um, just as we had heard earlier about the um, literature is a mirror, it is a lamp, and uh, often we talk about it as a bridge and we have new tools to make sense of this. So we can ask our students to do things they could never do before. We can ask them to interview their favorite author, even if the author has left the earth for 200 years or 2000 years. Um, we never could do that. We can ask uh, the AI tools to, help us um, compare and contrast many different scenes of falling in love or falling out of love or making a new discovery. Um, and we know that there are gonna be frustrations, there are gonna be mistakes uh, with this technology, but I think I've chosen, and I hope that you choose too, and over the next two days, we'll learn from each other that we can kind of be open about our frustrations, our discoveries, our um, good mistakes, our uh, satisfactions, and our insights. Um, I, many of you have heard me talk before about the Russian proverb, uh, trust but verify, and how in the AI era, I think this is extraordinarily important. And sometimes I even wonder if it's distrust and verify, but I don't want to focus on the negative perils. And we can all come up with many, many scenarios of where how AI could complicate our lives and make it more difficult. But I would ask us to return in the words of the American poet Walt Whitman to be curious, not judgmental. Let's explore. Let's be open about our explorations because it's an evolving terrain. And I don't know what tools I'll be using in six months or a year. I don't know what I'll learn from my students in January or August or next May. So I think we just have to be upfront about that. And I think as an educator, the challenge is for how do we model openness, curiosity, and uh, keep some perspective and, and uh, keep some skepticism. Um, I'm hoping that we will be able to see a rediscovery of the pleasures, and I mean, just the pleasures of reading and literature. 
if people can read for 15, 20 minutes a day, not out of obligation or duty, but out of choice and delight, I think we'll be in, in, in a much better place. And I think AI has some tools uh, that may help us do that. Um, and there may be ways for us to engage students more, meet them where they are, not just where the curriculum expects them to be. I think we can go beyond the set program and actually light that fire um, of curiosity. That's my hope. Um, and we'll see. Um, for myself, I'm kind of trying to be flexible and uh, embrace the, the possibilities. And it is a choice. And I'm choosing to dwell in the positive possibilities of what we will be able to do this year that we weren't able to do in 2020 or 19, you know, 1914, let alone 1814. So um, I think there, there's never been a more fascinating time to teach literature or to be an English teacher uh, than right now. And I hope that we can learn from each other some techniques and some tools um, to realize this potential. And I do think we might be surprised that instead of increasing dependency on technology, it may actually free people to be more curious about their own lives and relationships with others. That's my hope. So thank you.